Well, hello everyone and welcome back here to Goetia. Now, I'm really looking forward to getting back into this one. Sorry the voice is still a bit messed up. This uh, coldy, fluey thing that everyone in the United Kingdom seems to have gone down with is still messing me about. But, let's do our best, shall we? Alright. I've turned the volume down a little bit on the music because it was uh, getting a little bit strong um, but other than that we're going on the way we were now last time we read this story here um, let's see what else we can find here so let's have a look at this books oh wrong voice books about magic not a science I'm familiar with right and this one looks different the building and renovation of churches. I don't remember hearing about a chapel in the woods near the manor. Uh, that, I think, is what we call a clue in the business. There's only this light to illuminate the whole room. It's so dark and oppressive. Pencils, notebooks, and newspapers. What's this say? Mother. Mother, since you will not listen to reason, I must stop you myself. I apologize for stealing your notes, but I see no other way. Gabriel may be the oldest, but he has no idea what you're up to. I will be back for young Edward and Robert. I forbid you from trying anything with them, or you will really regret it. This has all gone on long enough. Farewell. Hey. Presumably his sir... Well, is his surname Hole? Should I really... Well, we'll never know. Father may not have been fond of horses. This statuette is gorgeous, but I don't remember it either. Can we... How do we process things again? Um uh did he did he did he menu no main menu there we go right sorry I've forgotten the button to press to possess things not that um Okay, let's try a few keys, see if we can work it out. Uh, right, we're going to go back to something new we can possess. Which was up here, I think. Alright, um, now we did this room. It's over here, there we go, that's it, this statue. Okay, so we actually, that's how we possess something. Let's put it back. Why not? There we go. There's, there's nothing wrong with being neat. <laughs> okay, so can we possess this? We cannot possess this. We can just look at it. Alright. But well, we can possess this. Well, let's have a look at it first. There is a massive book on the shelf. It must be important. So, I might be somewhat altered, but even so, there is no way I can read a book without finding a way to get it off the showcase. The showcase is locked. I can't get the book off the shelf. Okay, so, we, right, we need to find a way of opening that. Now, can we do anything with this? No? Okay. Right. What else have we got to look at here? I don't remember, recognize father's handwriting in this book. Writing a journal had never interested me up until now. 
but these past few days I felt the need for it. All of these things are crowding my mind and I can barely sleep. I found father's precious notes today. I discovered what took up all his time. An incredible collection of documents, vague references and crazy writings about demons and seals. Arr, arr. Names I know nothing about. Enigmatic symbols, drawings, a huge number of documents. Documents he used to share with my sweet Abigail an eternity ago. My first instinct was to close this box and put it back where I found it. But curiosity consumed me. But curiosity is consuming me. I am voraciously reading Father's documents, and I'm starting to make sense out of them. Maybe he wasn't as mad as his isolation let it, uh, uh, let it on. What I took for a time-consuming hobby was actually an in-depth study of an ancient cult named Goetia. The idea is, still seems crazy, and maybe it is. Goetia was used to call forth demons to ask questions or favours of them. A very human tradition. But these summonings seem to have been possible. Father seemed interested in five of these demons Malthus, Bute, Palmidon, Pharas, and Naberius. These notes are very detailed about rituals, formulas, personalities of each entity, strengths, and weaknesses, but difficulties between but the difficulties believing them really exist. However, Father's studies are so thorough and precise that I am beginning to have doubts. Curiosity is guiding me towards knowledge. I tried some of the rituals this past week. I am happy I can isolate myself as I feel somewhat ridiculous saying out loud the summoning words taken from uh, a strange language. I have no success yet. This quest is consuming me. I spend entire days writing down the questions I want to ask the demons, as well as behaviours and words I should avoid in their presence. I chose Malthus. He seems to be the less deranged of the demons among these I read about, and I hope he is not so dangerous. But he doesn't seem to hear me. I am growing desperate. War is coming. I can feel it. The people of Oakmarsh are different, nervous. The enemy is far from our front door, however, and I can't stop but feeling they are reacting strangely to my own presence. I couldn't explain this feeling. I feel foolish, confused. I can't sleep. I can't believe it. Malpheus answered. I first perceived an indescribable noise as a huge hammer was hitting the walls around me. Then a wind filled the room, coming from under the doors. I swear I heard the rustle of feathers as if thousands of birds were flying around the room. When he started speaking to me, I froze, too stunned to utter a single word. This fellow, this demon, is particularly charismatic. My first thoughts went to my beloved sister, Abigail, would have been so impressed, astonished, moved. I asked the questions I craved answers for. Was Abigail with him? Could he find her? He laughed. Malthus has a very charming laugh, very soft. He told me he couldn't bring her back, but that she was well. I should feel calm, but my thirst for answers isn't calmed. Malthus and I are growing to know each other. It feels so strange to write this and ever more strange to live it. This demon is particularly caring, and I sometimes forget that he's an entity far, far superior to us. Poor humans. It seems I am for him a welcome distraction. He has had little occasions to talk to the living these past five millennia. I sometimes think of my dear Joseph and feel a guilty relief that he should no longer be of this world. If father was still alive, my research and my success would have surely filled him with pride. And Abigail, who has often mocked my terror when faced with father's 
experiments. Can she only is she could she only see me today? Would she be proud of your older sister? I keep a research far from my children's reach. They are too young to understand what's at stake. But maybe I can start talking about it with Gabriel. I'm looking forward to sharing my knowledge of the rituals tied to Goetia. But maybe they suspect something. Alexander seems weary to lately. They're here. They started bombing London yesterday. Mrs. Matthews and her husband left Oak Marsh a few days ago, leaving everything behind. I'm worried. What will, we, will my children grow up in? Can I even imagine what tomorrow will look like? When I asked Malpheus, he had an amused look on him. He often has. The one that annoys me so much. Arrogant heap of feathers he doesn't care, of course. Hell is a far more peaceful place than Earth, he said. I exchanged a few words today with Elias, the vicar. I couldn't stand not sharing my research, but his reaction surprised me. He told me he had been eagerly waiting this day. Who other than me could know so much about this subject? The vicar offered me his help. How could a man of such God, uh, how could a man of God conduct such research, trying to call forth demons? I think I'll accept his offer. I only browsed through some of Father's work, and demonic inv invocation is only a small part of Goethe. And I can can't count on Malthus, who refuses to answer my questions on the subject. But that malicious bird can laugh as much as he wants. I'll get my answers. Oak Marsh is now empty. I have a ghost town at my door. Goetia isn't a discreet heart. And I suppose the, the last rituals convinced the bravest of them to leave their home. Let them go. I don't need such idiotic pre prejudices. When our enemies will be at these doors, at least I will have something to welcome them with. Gabriel, my sweet Gabriel. I was sure you'd understand I love you so much. Robert, Edward, I hope you'll understand the importance of this quest. There's no hope left. I won't be here when these disgusting invaders arrive, but let them try and get close to my children. They'll regret it. Come and colonize Oak Marsh. See what I care. See that I care. None of these short sighted villagers supported me when I needed it. They don't deserve to be remembered. But if they come inside Blackwood Manor, I will raise down hell on them. Thank you, Anton Elias Pastor. Thank you, Anton Elias Pastor. Pa okay, let me try this one again. Thank you, Eli uh, thank you Anton Elias Pastor from the bottom of my heart. Thank you so much. Everything will soon be ready. I won't be here to see the world crumble. You don't look as arrogant and mocking as before, Malthus. Don't worry, I'm not heartless. You won't be alone. A few friends will join you. The spell is sealed. Abigail, please wait for me. Hear me. Heed my call. Oh, wow. So it looks like when our lovely Abigail's father died, her sister took up the role of you know, the, the, the researcher, the summoner. And but also by the sounds of it she's grown into a woman and they're talking about war they're talking about invaders so with allowing for children we're talking at least world war one possibly world war two because she's talking about the children like their her children like their adults so um it looks like you know we're 
Yeah, we could possibly be in the 40s here, 1940s. Still can't possess that. It just seems logical that that's where the key is. Uh, shift click or anything like that. Okay, right, we'll move on. So I think we've done everything in this room. Almost already 15 minutes in. I think this is going to be a slow series, but I hope ever so much a fun one. Right. This box contains some sort of white powder. Now, has anyone got a five pound note? Uh. A hollowed skull, one of Mother's eccentricities. I suppose it must have come from upstairs library. I used to hide in this wardrobe, and he never found me in here. The pen is mightier than the sword, but which one would you rather be stabbed by? And the treasures do hide in the written word. I should try to remember this. Uh, what's upstairs? Right, so we still can't get we can't get through there. Doesn't appear to be anything in there. Let's go through this door. Hmm. Feathers. Interesting. Ah. Good evening, young lady. Who? Who are you? Oh, come now, you wound me. We are already acquainted. Of course, it was some time ago, and you may not have even seen that I was there. I am one of the kind your father did so love to talk about, even if he elected not to teach you much about them, me in particular. My current form, shall we say, should be something of a hint. Oh. You're one of those demons that father was studying, a raven. You must be Malfus. But demons, demons don't exist. I was, it was just an unpleasant hobby of his. I suppose you must be right, after all. That would be simply absurd, not unlike believing in ghosts, perhaps. Ha, ha, ha. I must say, I am rather surprised to see you here right now. No matter. I am almost flattered you recognised me. It means that mankind has not quite forgotten about me yet. Not completely, at least. What do you want? What do I want? Ha, ha, ha. Oh, I see. Abraham must have taught you that would, I would require a favour. If you were so impertinent to summon me. But in your case, young lady, I choose to appear before you. You do not summon me, and thus we can dispense with quid pro quo. I suppose I simply wanted to, well, chirp with someone, perhaps. Chirp? Fine. But what are you doing here? Ah, ha, ha! Now, that's quite an interesting question. Would that I could answer it. You mean you don't know? Not exactly. I recall that I was summoned, but a most unusual way. Annie, she called me, and we chirped for a time. But she deceived me, and trapped me within these walls. All I know is that some part of me remained in the cosy confines of hell. While the remainder is, well, is the manor itself, or something like that. Like, like when I possess an object? It does it see indeed seem that the same forces are at work here. And why are you preventing me from going any further? I'm doing nothing of the sort. Or rather, not consciously, you see. My girl, we're both poor spirits here. And it seems that our essences cannot collaborate, shall we say. I promise you, I would simply love for you to proceed. I dare say that you're the only one who can free me. A sigil on the ceiling. Could it be a hint? 
An answer? Ah, such a keen mind. It is not the answer itself. It must be some part of it. My sigil is not complete in this form. It cannot be seen by man, much to my man's sorrow. The sigil you see only represents half of my being, the part that remains in hell. There's another sigil. In fact, it is the opposite of this one. It represents the part of me that is trapped here among the living. Should you manage to find and decipher it, I would be free to leave this world. I knew you wanted something after all. Expose! Ah, ha, ha. Yes, it seems we both need each other. I expect that I can rely on you. You have blackwood blood running through your veins, or at least blackwood emptoplasm. If you'll pardon the expression. Wait, you... He's disappeared. Not quite. Do keep up the good work, Abigail. Simply forget that I'm watching your every move. Yes, that was in no way horrible and terrifying. And believe it or not, I think we have actually run out of time. So, loads of pictures. I think we will we'll pick this up in the next episode and we'll start here and have a look at all these portraits. So until the next time, I have been Sarah Parsons. This has been Goetia. Thank you. And good night.